Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll be adding a canvas to our window and then printing some text onto it. The first thing to check is the project still runs. This is the result of tutorial one, which is tagged in the GitHub repository. It should look something like this with a blank window. The first thing we need to do after this is to create a new folder and drop some fonts into it. I'm using Open Sans, which is available to download from the internet. Because I'm checking this file in, I'm including the Apache license which came with it. Having copied the font files across, we need to make sure the DLL file, SDL underscore TTF, is also included and is available as separate download from the usual SDL development files. Instructions and links for this are in the GitHub README linked in the notes below this video. The final thing we need to do is to add the dependency to the cargo.toml file. This is done as a list on the features key as so. The fonts library is now available to be imported and used on our canvas. Now we can start writing code inside our main.rs file. Scroll down to where the window was created. Remove the underscore from the variable because we're going to use this now rather than intentionally not using it. Immediately underneath this, we're going to create our canvas object and we add an expect to throw a human readable error if this fails. We also need to create a texture creator in order to render our font onto a surface. We create the texture creator from the canvas element. Then we need to create the font object from the file we downloaded earlier. We start with a TTF context from the SDL TTF library. This has a map error to help us debug if something goes wrong and we want to return the value, not the result of the object, so we add a question mark. Next up, we create a path object with the value of the location of the font file. Finally, we create our actual font object from the TTF context and font path variables. Set the size to 128. And we add a bit underneath to set the font style to bold. We need to add in the missing imports, for example, the path library we used. And then we move on to create our rendering function. We will be calling this function immediately before our duration sleep, but first let's create the function and we'll do this above the main function. We'll call our function render. We'll pass in the canvas object, the texture creator. The texture creator takes a type of window context and finally we'll pass in the font we created. We could render the font every time we run the render loop, but this would be hugely inefficient to do, so we create it once and pass it into the renderer. We also want to return a result here, and because we're returning a result, we want to add OK to the bottom of the function. Next up, we'll create a color for the background of the window, and we set the canvas draw color of the canvas. Clear the canvas, and finally, present the new canvas. And as we run this, we shall see that we have some errors. This is expected and is a good example of the Rust compiler helping us out by showing us what we need to add. We scroll to the top of the error list and start there, at the first thing the compiler found that was wrong. We can see I missed a colon in the font declaration, and we can see the window canvas is not found in scope, so this type will need importing as well. We'll add in the texture creator at the same time as we need that too, and they exist in the same package. When we cargo run again, and we still have errors, the first one tells us that we need a window context, and it helpfully gives us the text we need to do this. A great example of the ways the Rust compiler is significantly more helpful, say, than the C or C++ compilers. It's very good at guessing what you meant to do although you should be careful to make sure that it is what you meant to do and don't blindly copy paste the code in 
or you can end up with bugs further down the line. And we have this final error on the set style call. This error occurs when we try to use a result object rather than the value stored within the result object. And if we scroll up, we can add the question mark to the font variable creation. Then the font will be a font object and not a result object. We can see that it's compiling and shows the blank window we had before, which is good. That's because we aren't calling the render function yet. So let's add the render function call in and try again. We pass in our canvas, texture creator, and the font. And recompiling shows us that we need to borrow these values and add mutable for the canvas. And now we can see the canvas with the color we created, in this case black, and shows that our canvas is now ready to draw on. Next, we will return to our render function and put the font code in there. We need to create the string to display, and we create a surface to push the font onto, calling the render function on the font and we give it a color, but we're going to add a 50% transparency, again mapping the error and making sure we get the object not the result back. Then we create a texture using the texture creator and pass in the surface, again setting the error and grabbing the object not result. Then we create a target rect to hold the image drawn, bearing in mind that the first two arguments need to be i32 for the x and y position, which can be negative, and then U32 for the width and height, which can never be negative. And finally, we copy the texture onto the canvas, remembering to wrap the target in a sum cast, and then ignoring the result being returned. We run our code now, and we see I made a mistake by calling color RGB instead of RGBA, as we want to include the alpha channel. We need RGBA. We also need to import the SDL rect rect and then we rebuild. And we can see the result, which is the text printed to our canvas. Thank you for watching. If you have any problems with the code or comments or questions, then please leave them in the comments section below. If there's anything you'd like to see covered, then feel free to ask there as well. See you in the next one.